Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to GM Construct for a long overdue new episode of Wire Mod Essentials. Now there's no time to waste since it's been so long since the last episode, so let's get right to work. Today we'll be discussing the creation of realistic thrusters. That is, thrusters that you can change the throttle of and that use fuel while you're using them. Looking back on the basics, the first thing we're going to need is an advanced pod controller because we'll be controlling this vehicle from a seat. So go ahead and place that wherever you see fit. Alright, as I get everything frozen into place, let's go ahead and get our thruster tool out. You're going to want to set the min force to zero and max force to 10,000. That way the force scales properly. As for the normal force, that's up to you. Alright, we've got our main thrusters in place. As for the steering thrusters, they aren't that important, so we aren't going to do anything fancy with them. Just place them on the sides of the vehicle. Now, since in this tutorial we'll be modifying values like throttle and fuel, we'll need to have something to keep track of those pieces of information so we can know how fast we're going and how much gas we have. The best solution to this problem would be a screen. Not a text screen, but a normal one. For the options, you're going to want to check only one value, bigger value, and floor value. All of these options will ensure that only one large value appears on the screen, and then that value is only a whole number. Type throttle in the label box and spawn the screen. Alright, you'll notice that the screen's default value is zero. Once we start feeding data into it, this will change. Do the same thing with the other screen. Same settings, only change the label to fuel. We'll spawn this on the other stock. Okay, looks like both the screens spawn successfully. What I was trying to accomplish by doing this is giving you a sort of heads-up display so that you can see at any given time how much fuel you have or how much throttle you're using. Now that our vehicles are mechanically working order, let's go ahead and start wiring. The first thing that we need to do before we do anything else is link the pod controller. Looking back on the basics, get the pod controller tool, right click the pod controller, and right click the seat you want to link it to. Alright, now that that's out of the way, we can get to the good stuff. The first thing that we're going to need, gates-wise, is a gate, time, timer. We're going to need two of them, in fact. If you remember back to the tank episode, we used two timers to steadily increase or decrease the length of a hydraulic cable controlling the height of a cannon arm. We'll be applying the same concept to this vehicle, only instead of changing the length of a cable, we'll be changing the input thrust of our thrusters. Alright, looks like our increasing and decreasing timers are both placed. Now, in order to achieve the increasing and decreasing effect that we're trying to do, the next thing we need is a gate arithmetic increment decrement. This will allow us to increase or decrease a value incrementally using the timer inputs. Once again looking back on the tank tutorial, this was all we needed, but that was because there was no limit to how far, in either direction, we wanted the hydraulic to go. In this case, we only want it to be between 0 and 100. So the next thing we need is a gate comparison less than. This will ensure that as long as the number is less than 100, we can increase it. Next we need a gate logic and. And finally, we need a gate arithmetic multiply. This will convert ones and zeros from the less thans and the and gates to values that we can work with when we're working with the thrusters. Working in the downward direction, we need a gate, comparison, greater than. This will ensure that so long as the value is above zero, we will be able to go lower. But once it's at zero, we won't be able to. For this mechanism, that's as far as the differences go. So we'll go ahead and grab another gate, logic, and, and another gate, arithmetic, multiply, and place them in the same locations relative to the other ones. You don't have to, of course. It just helps with wiring. All right, looks like our circuitry is in place. I'll explain the relations between these pieces later. For now, let's gather up the last of our components and get to wiring. For the throttle system, the last critical component we'll need is a constant value, with the values 100, 0, and 0 0.25. The 0 and 100 will serve to impose limits on how high or how low you can set the throttle. 
the 0 0.25 will be the increment decrement value used on the increment decrement chip. That being said, let's get wiring. Wire the first timer to the advanced pod controller. Run to the output of W. That way it counts up when you press W. Now wire the second timer's run to the advanced pod's output of S. That way the second timer counts up when you're pressing S. Wire the first timer's reset to the output of S. That way it resets when you're pressing the S key. And finally wire the reset of the second timer to the output of W. That way it resets when you're trying to go forward. Now as I probably explained in the tank tutorial, this system of runs and resets makes sure that only one timer is running at a time, and the other one is reset while the first one is running, and vice versa. Next we have to wire A from the less than to the increment decrement, so that we can take the increment decrement as the first comparison value. The same story with the greater than, wire A from there to the increment decrement. The next step in this comparison is wiring B from the less than to the constant value, applying the value of 100. Next, wire B from the greater than to the constant value and apply it to the value of 0. There we have our comparison values. Now we're going to wire A from the first AND to the less than gate, and then wire A from the second AND to the greater than gate. Those serve to check that the less than and greater than are both true. But we're not done yet. Now we need to wire B from the first AND to the advanced pod output W. Next, wire B from the second AND to the advanced pod output of S. This is basically saying if the value is in range and the key is being pressed, activate the increment decrement. To complete this lengthy process, wire A from the second multiply to the second AND and A from the first multiply to the first AND. Then wire B from the first multiply to the first timer, and B from the second multiply to the second timer. Now with all the logic out of the way, let's wire up our increment decrement. Wire A to the value of 0 0.25, increment to the first multiply, and decrement to the second multiply. Keep in mind which multiply represents what, otherwise your increment and decrements could be reversed. Now let's wire A from the throttle screen to the increment and decrement to display the value that we're attempting to achieve. And before we proceed, let's take a look at what's going on. Now let's review our data. When the W key isn't being pressed, we have a timer at 0, an increment and decrement less than 100, which is true, so 1, and a multiply with the values of 0 and 1 in it, which obviously equals 0. Now let's see what happens if we press the W key and increase it to 2. 2 is still less than 100, so the true remains at 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. However, if we start from 99 and increase to 100, 100 is not less than 100, so the less than output is 0. 100 times 0 is 0. Now, the way the increment decrement works is that whenever it receives a value change greater than 1, it increments. If we apply this to our values, we see that between 98 and 100, the gate is able to increment, but once it gets to 100, the trigger value becomes 0, and it never increments again. Shown here at double speed is the results of our work. Notice that the counter stops when it gets to 100, and stops again when it gets to 0. As things currently stand, we can't place the value that we've created inside of the thrusters. They only accept numbers between 0 and 1. So to convert our 0 to 100 scale to a 0 to 1 scale, we need to divide it by 100. So let's get out a gate arithmetic divide. Alright, now that we've spawned our divide gate in a comfortable position, let's go ahead and wire it up. Wire A from the divide to the increment decrement, placing the 0 to 100 value in the numerator. Then we'll wire B from the divide gate to the constant value of 100, placing 100 in the denominator, effectively dividing the 0 to 100 by 100, making a value like 25, 0 0.25, etc. Next, we're going to wire A from each of the thrusters to the divide, to send the throttle value to the thrusters, to be used by the thrusters. Now basically, what this is doing is it's sending a throttleable value to the thrusters. If the thrusters are set at 1,000 and they receive 0 0.5 as their throttle value, they'll output 500 thrust, so on and so forth. Let's take it for a spin. With a throttle input of 1%, you see we're moving very slowly, even though we have thrusters set to 7,500 thrust. If we set it to 14%, we're moving a little faster. 
Now let's step on the gas a little bit. I'm going to crank the throttle up to all the way to about 85% and see what it does. See, even at just 85%, the, th the thrusters are putting out at almost full potential, compared to 1% where we were barely moving. So this really works. At just 1%, you're putting out maybe 7.5 thrust, but at 85%, you're putting out about 6,000, 7,000 thrust. So it makes sense that we ended up on the other side of the map. Let's get this baby set up and go back to the building area so it can work on the fuel system. Here we are back in our building area, and our vehicle is set up to be wired for the fuel system. We're going to use the other side for the sake of space, and then this time we're going to be outputting to the fuel screen. Once again, we're going to make use of the gate time timers. This time the timer will serve to count up how many seconds we've been using the thrusters for. And this time around, we'll only require one. Now that that's in place, let's go ahead and grab a gate arithmetic subtract. This will subtract the timer value from a fuel tank value, which will cause it to decrease as the timer increases. Now we'll be adding the fuel tank, so to speak. Let's grab a constant value with a single value of 120. We're grabbing another constant value for the sake of keeping the value separated as to avoid any confusion and save some time. This will be our fuel inventory that we'll subtract from as the timer increases. If you want a small tank, set it to a small number like 40. If you want a large tank, set it to a number like 360. Obviously, the higher the number, the longer you'll be able to ride the thrusters without running out of fuel. Now, believe it or not, that's all we need, other than a couple of gates to consolidate the systems, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's just go ahead and wire these things up. The first thing we're going to wire is the timer to the divide gate. And keep in mind that the timer will run so long as it's receiving a value greater than zero. So we're going to wire run from the timer to the divide gate. Because so long as the divide gate is outputting a value between 0 0.01 and 1, the timer will start to count up. Which is all fine and dandy, but we need the timer to count down. This is where the subtract gate comes in. Wire A from the subtract gate to your tank value, 120 in this case. And then wire B to the timer. That way when the timer is counting up, the subtract gate will show that it's counting down. Finally, wire A from the screen to the subtract gate to show the value. Now we're almost done. We need two more gates to consolidate the system, because a fuel system and a throttle system by themselves don't make much sense. The first of these gates is a gate arithmetic multiply. Let's make it a nice big gate to make sure that we illustrate the importance of it. The next one we're going to need is a gate comparison greater than. We'll discuss the importance of these in a moment. For now, let's go ahead and wire them up. First things first, let's wire the greater than to the subtract gate we just finished with. Wire A from the greater than to the subtract gate. Now we're going to wire B from the greater than to the constant value of zero, because it's testing whether or not the subtract gate actually still has fuel in it. In other words, greater than zero. Now we can't really use a simple one or zero, so wire A from the multiply to the greater than, and wire B to the divide. To fully integrate these two systems, we need to rewire a couple of things. Wire A from the thrusters to the newest multiply gate, because this is the new gate controlling what output the thrusters receive. Then you need the wire run from the timer to the multiply. This is because the multiply is outputting the last version of the divide number that we were originally controlling the timer with. Now I think we're just about ready to go, but I'd like to explain a few things before we take off. Let's do a quick review. We have two systems, a fuel system and a throttle system. Each of these systems have their own values. In this case, we'll make them both 10 for the sake of simplicity. We're dividing the throttle by 100, and we're subtracting the fuel by a timer value. What's going on here is so long as the fuel value shown in red is greater than zero, it's equal to one, and one times the throttle value is the throttle value, in this case, 0 0.1. But if we were to bring the throttle down to 0, we'd still have fuel, but it'd be multiplying that fuel by 0, and the throttle value would now be 0. On the other hand, if we run out of fuel, then we're multiplying the throttle value by 0 fuel, which also changes the throttle value to 0. Either way, we're not going anywhere. Now that we have a full understanding of why and how everything works, let's take it for a spin. Notice how the fuel has begun decreasing. It'll continue to decrease so long as the throttle is above zero. 
but if we change the throttle back down to zero, the fuel will stop decreasing. Skipping forward a bit, it looks like we're running out of gas. So let's head back to the building area, and I'll explain to you the last and most crucial part of this project, how to refuel. Now that we're back in our building area, let's go ahead and take a look at this fueling tank that we haven't seen yet. As we have things set up, the simplest way to refuel would simply be wiring a button to say the reset function of the fuel timer, but we're going to be a little more fancy than that. Fanciness aside, we'll still need a button. This button is just going to be a standard 1-0 button, non-toggled, you can place it anywhere you want. Now here's the bonus. Since this episode's all about realistic thrusters, I thought why not make the refueling system realistic too? We're going to be using an underappreciated wire tool, known as the plug and socket. It can be found in the I.O. segment of your wire tools. With the tool selected, pressing left mouse will create a socket, and pressing right mouse will create a plug. We're going to go ahead and time-lapse to the process of me fiddling around with this thing to try and get it on the car. I hope you don't mind. Another not-quite-so-necessary detail will be adding a rope to the back of the plug to make it look like a fuel line. You can experiment with the add length field to make the rope sag like a normal fuel pump would. Let's keep this over here for safekeeping. Now, in essence, how plugs and sockets work is they carry values like a river. If you have A, for example, wired from a plug to a button, that output of A will travel to the plug and it won't get any further unless the plug is connected to a socket. However, if it is connected to a socket, that value will be carried through the socket to whatever the socket is wired to. Keeping that in mind, let's wire A from the plug to the button carrying the value from the button to the plug. Now, so long as the plug isn't connected to a socket, that value won't go anywhere. Lastly, let's wire our reset value from the timer to the socket. Wire reset to output A of the socket. Now, this is important. We chose output A on the socket because we chose input A on the plug. You have to make sure that your values are lined up and correspond, otherwise they won't go to the correct places. Alright, we're completely done with all construction and wiring. Now the last thing we need to do is test this baby out. Now I find that these plugs are most responsive when you're using the gravity gun. So just plop it in there, and now that it's connected it'll be sending values to and from the plug. Pressing the button will send the value through the rope, so to speak, I guess, to the plug, to the socket, and then finally, resetting our timer, saying that we have a full fuel tank. Well, hey, we just spent all that money on gas, why don't we take it for a spin again? See how it runs. Full fuel tank, no throttle, and as we increase the throttle, the fuel starts dropping again. And that's all there is to it. Rinse and repeat, really. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped.